In this video, we'll be scraping various websites and importing the data into Google Sheets. Other than the various websites, we'll only use Google Sheets. As mentioned, the only tool we'll be using is Google Sheets. If you don't have access to it, create an account at google.com forward slash sheets forward slash about. In total, we'll be scraping five websites in this tutorial. They are Command Codeless's Sandbox. This is my website. I created this sandbox for people to practice scraping. You can reach it at commandcodeless.com forward slash sandbox. We'll be using the import XML function in Google Sheets on this page. Second, Florida State University. They have a range of CSV files that we can work with and you can access them at this link. It's in the description. Specifically, we'll be working with the homes.csv file. We'll be using the import data function on that. The third website we'll be scraping is Tim Ferriss's RSS feed. You'll be able to access Tim Ferriss's RSS feed at tim.blog forward slash feed. We'll be using the import feed function on the RSS feed. Fourth, Wikipedia's list of countries and dependencies by population. You can access that at this link. It's in the description. We'll be working with the main table on this page and we'll be using the import HTML function on the table. And fifth, Sample World Cup data by Google Sheets. You can access the Google Sheet at this link. It's also in the description. We'll be extracting a range of data from this sheet. We'll be using the import range function on this sheet. As I've touched upon, for each website, we'll be using a different function in Google Sheets to scrape it. The five functions that we'll be using are import XML, import data, import feed, import HTML, and import range. For convenience, I've timestamped this video in the description. And so you're aware of the legalities of web scraping, I've linked a helpful article there too. The first function in Google Sheets we'll be using to pull data from a website is import XML. And we'll be scraping the command codeless sandbox. To begin, I've already copy and pasted the website URL into Google Sheets. Let's go to the sandbox on command codeless. And what I want to do is scrape the name of each country. Though, we must locate the class before doing so. If you have a basic understanding of HTML and CSS, you'll know what I mean by class. However, if you don't, Fear not, it will all become clear. Open the Google Chrome Develop Console to begin locating the class. You'll want to right click and click Inspect to open the Developer Console. You'll now see the HTML code for the page. We must find the class that the country names sit within. Let's search. You'll see elements being highlighted as you scroll up and down. As you're scrolling, you should spot a whole section for countries sorted by population. If we expand this section and continue expanding this section, you'll come across a div class for country names. And as we can see, we've got it here. That's the class that we needed to locate. We can double click on this class, copy it, and then go back to Google Sheets. Let's create the formula to scrape the class we copied. We're going to use the import XML function and it will start as follows. Equals import XML. Now we'll want to open a pair of brackets and define the website to scrape. A2, and I'll put a comma and a space. 
We entered A2 instead of the URL because the URL is already inserted in cell A2. By creating the formula as we've done, it shortens the length of it. Now we can build out the formula to scrape the class we copied. To begin, we want to open up a pair of quotations. And everything to scrape the class is going to sit within this pair of quotations. And this is going to be a fairly long statement, so bear with me, but it'll all become clear as we build it out, and I'll explain each step as we go. So we want to start with two forward slashes and write div. Reason being, the class that we want to scrape sits within a div block. Hence, we need to enter div. And then we want to open up a pair of square brackets. And um, within this pair of square brackets is where we're going to define the actual class that we want to scrape on the command code list sandbox. So let's write at class and then enter an equal sign. And then open up a pair of single quotes. And then within that pair of single quotes, simply paste in the class name that we copied from the command codeless website when we found the actual class that the country name sat within in the Google Chrome Developer Console. So once you've pasted that in, you can click enter. And once you click enter, every element within that class should show. In our case, all the country names should show from command codeless's sandbox. That's how you use the import XML function in Google Sheets to scrape. Let's move on and use the import data function in Google Sheets. The second function in Google Sheets we'll be using to pull data from a source is import data. And we'll be scraping homes.csv. To begin, I've already copy and pasted the CSV's URL into Google Sheets. Note, when you're scraping data from a CSV file using the import data function in Google Sheets, you must enter the direct link to the CSV. As you can see, we've copied the direct link to the CSV from Florida State University's site. Let's create the formula to scrape the data from the CSV file. We're going to use the import data function and it will start as follows. Equals import data. Now we'll want to open up a pair of brackets and define the website we want to scrape. So within the brackets, we simply need to enter A2. We enter A2 instead of the URL because the URL is already inserted in cell A2. By creating the formula as we've done, it shortens the length of it. Alternatively, you could paste the URL to the CSV in between the brackets. Once you click enter, the data from the CSV file should show, in our case, all of the homes data that was stored within the homes.csv file. Let's move on and use the import feed function. The third function in Google Sheets we'll be using to pull data from a source is import feed, and we'll be scraping Tim Ferriss's RSS feed. To begin, I've already copy and pasted the RSS feed URL into Google Sheets. Let's create the formula to scrape the data from Tim Ferriss's RSS feed. We're going to use the import feed function, and it'll start as follows. Equal, import, feed. Now we want to open up a pair of brackets and define the website to scrape. So we'll want to enter A2, enter a comma and a space. We entered A2 instead of the URL because the URL is already inserted there. By creating the formula as we've done, it shortens the length of it, hence making it more readable. Now we can enter what we want from the RSS feed. For this project, we want the title of each post that Tim Ferriss publishes. So we'll want to open up the pair of quotations and between those, we'll want to enter items title. And then outside of the quotations, I'll do another comma and a space. We don't want every single post in the RSS feed. We want the 10 latest. 
So let's continue our formula with the following. We'll enter true and then another comma and 10 as the limiter for the amount of posts we want from the RSS feed. And once you click enter, the 10 latest items that have been posted to Tim Ferriss's RSS feed will get returned. And specifically, the title for those items. That's how you use the import feed function in Google Sheets to scrape. Let's move on and use the import HTML function in Google Sheets. The fourth function in Google Sheets we'll be using to pull data from a website is import HTML. And we'll be scraping Wikipedia's list of countries and dependencies by population. To begin, I've already copy and pasted the website URL into Google Sheets. Let's go to the page on Wikipedia. I want to scrape all of the data in this table. Make a mental note that this is the first table on the page. Hence, it's at index one. If you have a basic understanding of HTML and CSS, using import HTML will be a little easier for you. However, if you don't, fear not, it will all become clear. We're going to be using the import HTML function. So let's go back to Google Sheets and start the formula. So it will begin as follows, equals import HTML. Now we want to open up a pair of brackets and define the website to scrape. So we'll simply want to enter, as we've done before, a2, a comma, and then space. As I've mentioned, we entered a2 instead of the URL because the URL is already inserted there. By creating the formula as we've done, it shortens the length of it. Alternatively, you could paste the URL to the web page in between the brackets. However, by creating it the way we've done, it makes it a whole lot more readable. Now we can build out the formula to scrape the data in the table. So we'll want to open up a pair of quotations, and within those, we'll want to write table. And then a comma outside of the quotations and a space. As we're scraping from a table, we had to end a table. However, if it were a list you were using this function on, you'd enter list. Let's now define the index number of the table in the formula. And that's as simple as entering one. As mentioned earlier, the table on that page is at index number one. It's the first table on the page. However, if there were several tables on the page, you would have to select the correct index number. As I showed you before, the Google Chrome Developer Console is helpful for such a task. Once you click enter, all of the data in the table on Wikipedia should show in your Google Sheet. You've successfully scraped it. That's how you use the import HTML function in Google Sheets to scrape. Let's move on and use the import range function. The fifth function we'll be using to pull data from a source is import range, and we'll be scraping sample World Cup data by Google Sheets. To begin, I've already copy and pasted the URL into Google Sheets. Let's create the formula to scrape the data from another Google Sheet. We're going to use the import range function and it will start as follows. Equals import range. Now we'll want to open up a pair of brackets and define the URL to scrape. So within the brackets, as before, we want to enter a2, a comma, and a space. We entered a2 instead of the URL because the URL is already inserted there. By creating the formula as we've done, it shortens the length of it. Now we want to enter the worksheet within that Google Sheet. So let's open up a pair of quotations. And I know the name of the worksheet within that Google Sheet. It's called World Cup. So let's simply enter that and then enter an exclamation mark. Now, if there are multiple sheets within a Google Sheet, you mustn't miss this step. The scraper needs to know which sheet you want data from within a Google Sheet. 
Now we can define the range of columns we want to scrape the data. So I want data from the columns of A1 to I21. Once you click enter, the range of data you selected will get scraped and entered into your Google Sheet. That's how you use the import range function in Google Sheets to scrape. And that brings us to the end of this video on web scraping with Google Sheets. This project is now complete. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this no code project, please give this video a like. And if you want to be notified of the latest no code projects that I publish every week, please subscribe. I'll see you in another no code project.